This is Kim Meyer, host of Choose to Rise. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. Hi, this is Emily. This is Lindsay. And this is Elizabeth. Co-hosts of Beauties and Headcanons here on Public House Media. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. Once you are done with this episode, we hope you'll come check out our show, Beauties and Headcanons, where we talk nerdy to you about fandoms, fan fiction, and all pop culture for nerds that you can think of. A new show comes out every Friday. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes so you never miss an episode of Beauties and Headcanons. Thanks again for checking out the following broadcast on Public House Media. The latest headlines. The Houston Astros, the defending World Series champions, got better, adding Garrett Cole. The insightful interviews. Rick Saratella, NFL Draft Bible. With how much emphasis is put on the position, yet how many over the last couple of years we've had questions, why do we put such an emphasis on drafting a quarterback number one overall? The bottom line is there's not enough good quarterbacks to go around. And I think with the new CBA, it's really a low-risk gamble now. If you look at the playoff teams, the common denominator good quarterback play the hottest takes i think the guy to blame is the one guy who hasn't left yet i think russell westbrook is one of the bigger problems in oklahoma city can all be found on press row broadcasting is part of the public house media network here's your host it doesn't matter what your name is christian heimel show me the money couple of NFL players getting big name deals earlier this week. A lot of things going on in the world of the NFL. Trades going on, contracts being signed as well. Uh, it's, It's not even week one yet, but we already know for a fact that Sam Darnold will start for the New York Jets in week one. Christian Hommel here with you guys on Press Row, broadcasting as part of the Public House Media Network as we do every single week. Don't forget you can find us on social media, Twitter and Instagram handles at Press Row PHM. You can email the show, Press Row PHM at gmail.com or find us on Facebook, Press Row Podcast by Public House Media. We'll get into all the deals that have gone on, not just in the NFL, but Major League Baseball. The waiver deadline is uh, tomorrow and you're already seeing some, some more names traded uh, we saw, of course, Daniel Murphy and Matt Adams last week. The Nationals are trying to get a few more gone. Uh, the Brewers couldn't get a deal for Matt Harvey. Um, but Jose Bautista is gone from the Mets. It seems as though there's going to be more deals here in the last 24 hours or so. But when you look uh, at, at what it means for some of those teams, we'll touch on that in a little bit. Your listener questions as well. And then I want to get to, to, a, to a poll question that we posed uh, on our Facebook page, Chief Seats by Public House Media, that you guys have voted on. And I'm a little surprised, maybe not surprised at the winner, but just the margin of victory, I think. And uh, and we'll touch on that here in just a little bit. But we'll start with the NFL, where massive contracts have been handed out to Aaron Rodgers, as well as Odell Beckham Jr., with a lot of guaranteed millions. So Odell Beckham. We'll start there. A five-year, $95 million contract, $65 million is guaranteed. A record for a wide receiver. Odell Beckham, who, again, has not played a actual football game since uh, week four in 2017, of course, with that Achilles injury. Um, still an incredibly dynamic player. Still a... Uh, a freak athlete, and and this is a great deal for a number of reasons. The Giants now have locked up a number one target, the most dynamic wide receiver in football. He may not be the best, and I don't think he is. I think he's the third best behind Antonio Brown and Julio Jones. But you cannot deny that there is he is the most dynamic wide receiver in the NFL right now. And you lock up a guy who, in his three years of being healthy, so we're going to eliminate 2017, In his three years of being healthy, he was selected to the Pro Bowl all three times. 109 yards per game, 97 yards per game, 86 yards per game. Yes, the numbers have come down, but that's what happens when people start to recognize your tendencies a little bit. Um, 2014, his rookie year in just 12 games. 12 games, guys. 91 catches, 12 touchdowns, 109 yards. 2015, 96 catches, 13 touchdowns, 97 yards a game. 2016, 101 career high, 
10 touchdowns, 85 yards per game. He's averaging seven yards, or excuse me, 14 yards a catch. He's averaging, uh, let's see, what is that? He's averaging 12 touchdowns a year, averaging close to 95 per game, per 95 yards per game. He's averaging almost 100 yards or 100 catches a year. This is an incredibly freakish athlete who, when you look at him, already, again, three Pro Bowls, already is uh, one of the active leaders in terms of receptions, in terms of yards per catch, in terms of yards per game. Um, and he is ranked as one of the best, and I said the most dynamic one. So for the Giants, it's huge because you lock him up for multiple years. Uh, you know, you you are able to pair him with Eli Manning, and now you don't have to have this, this worry anymore about if this contract's going to happen. I'm a little surprised that it happened before the season. I thought the Giants would have waited to see how he looked in actual competition first, but um, you cannot argue with it. It was a move that needed to be made. It was a move that makes a lot of sense, and now the Giants, and we'll touch on this next week. Next week, we'll have our NFL preview show, but the Giants are a trendy pick to go to the playoffs, maybe go to the Super Bowl, and a lot of that is because this offense is built to win right now, and you solidify that for a couple of years now, too, because you still have Evan Ingram. You have a rejuvenated offensive line. You have Saquon Barkley. You have Odell Beckham now locked up for five years. Eli Manning may have a couple extra years left in him, but you get a good enough draft pick or maybe you sign somebody in free agency. The Giants are built to not only win this year, but for the next couple of years because of this signing with Odell Beckham Jr. And then, of course, for Odell, I mean, you're the highest paid wide receiver of all time. Uh, you you know, you don't have to worry about it uh, anymore. You don't have to go into the season wondering about a contract. So there's that one. The other one that was an absolute true no-brainer, the one that was a big-time no-brainer, was what the Green Bay Packers did in signing Aaron Rodgers, the probably the best quarterback in the game, record-breaking four-year, $134 million extension that with bonuses and everything else could be worth up to $180 million, $103 million almost guaranteed. Locks him up through the 2023 season, an average annual value of $33.5 million, total max value of the deal $176 million and $180 million based off $4 million in incentives tied to helping making the Packers, get the Packers into the playoffs and finishing in the top three in the NFL in quarterback rating. This was huge because they've been talking about this for a long time, <laughs> since March, you know, when they wanted to get a deal done. Uh, Matt Ryan signing a pretty big one. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo signed one. Kirk Cousins, of course, the fully guaranteed deal with the contract. Rodgers' last contract was a five-year, $110 million deal um, with a $35 million signing bonus and a $54 million guaranteed. At that time, he was at the top of the scale with $22 million a year. He's back at the top now, 33 and a half. Below him is Matt Ryan with 30. Below him is Kirk Cousins, 28 million, and then Jimmy Garoppolo, 27 and a half million. Um, so this was a deal that was absolutely needed to get done. I think everybody expected it. I think we're all a little surprised that this one took so long. I mean, much like I said about Odell Beckham, I'm surprised how it that it happened this early. I'm just as surprised that it took Green Bay this long to lock up Aaron Rodgers, but it is 100% needed. It is 100% deserved, and um, you cannot be mad about it. You cannot be surprised about it. This guy, again, Tom Brady, and this might be weird, but I was in Boston over the weekend talking to some people, and uh, I kind of got lit up for this, but, you know, it happens. Tom Brady is the best quarterback to ever play the game. Aaron Rodgers is the best quarterback in the league right now today. He's that important to his team. He's that talented. And um, and the Packers knew that they were going to have to do this. They knew this was going to get done. And it's just nice to see it finally over and finally there. One thing that is interesting, though, that the Packers did, and you're on Press Row here, broadcasting as part of the Public House Media Network. Christian, I'm with you. You can find me on Twitter if you'd like. And uh, you know, rip me apart for saying that Aaron Rodgers is better than Tom Brady this year. It's fine if, if you'd like to. Um, one thing the Packers did, which is kind of interesting, by the way, Twitter handle at Chris Heimel, C-H-R-I-S-H-E-I-M-A-L-L. The uh, show handle at Press Row PHM it involved their backup quarterback, the Packers, uh, in trading him. And, and maybe not maybe not 
who they traded, but but why and, and who they got back. We'll touch on that as well as the New York Jets have officially announced their starting quarterback. We got trades in Major League Baseball as well. Your listener questions, there's a whole bunch still to get to. You're on Press Row, broadcasting as part of the Public House Media Network. Want to be part of the show? Go to Facebook and search Press Row Podcast Dash Public House Media, or find us on Twitter and Instagram at Press Row PHM. You can also email the program Press Row PHM at Gmail dot com. I'm the Greg, and I am Dave Show. We host the Greg and Dave Show on Public House Media. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. Once you're done with this episode, I hope you'll come check out our show, The Greg and Dave Show, where we talk about strange, bizarre, and sometimes just downright quirky news stories that you may not have heard about. A new show comes out every Wednesday. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes. And hey, thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. This is Press Row with Christian Heimel, a Public House Media podcast. Welcome back on Press Row. Christian Heimel here with you, broadcasting as part of the Public House Media Network. We're going to get your listener questions in just a little bit, as well as a uh, poll question that we put up on Facebook uh, over the week. Uh, but uh, how bizarre for a, a couple of things here. Uh, we were talking signings in the NFL prior to the break. And uh, after that, after you know, you talk about these signings, it's these trades that happened on Wednesday that were really interesting. Uh, two different ones that I can kind of see it, but I don't understand. We'll start with the Packers, um, who just, again, signed Aaron Rodgers to the largest um, annual average value contract in NFL history, 33 and a half on average. Uh, so if something happens to him, that's a lot of money just sitting on the bench. It, like last year, if something happens to him where Aaron Rodgers breaks a collarbone, God forbid, their backup, Nick, uh, Brett Hundley, didn't do too great. He was three and six last year in nine starts, 1,800 yards, nine touchdowns, but 12 picks. He is no longer part of the Packers. They sent uh, Brett Hundley to Seattle, the Packers did, for a third-round draft pick uh, for, yeah, 2019 draft pick. Um, and it's the second time in six months that the Packers have traded for uh, traded a quarterback uh, or for a quarterback. Um, they got in March, they traded Demarius Randall to the Browns for Deshaun Kaiser. So here's what's going to happen. If anything were to happen to Aaron Rodgers, it's not Brett Hundley, who already knows the offense and who went 3-6 and six with 1,800 yards last year. Um, it's going to be Deshaun Kaiser, who last year was 0-15 with a 53.5 completion percentage and led the league with 22 interceptions. I don't understand. I don't understand. Now, listen. Um... Offensive coordinator Joe Philbin, I definitely see progress and development and improvement talking about Kaiser, um, but this is this does not make a lot of sense for me. It really doesn't. It, it's very strange um, because see, even for Seattle, it, Hundley's going into the last year of his rookie contract, um, and, and now he's going to be a backup to Russell Wilson, outseating uh, Austin Davis as well as Alex McGough, but... <sighs> This doesn't make sense to me. If you're the Green Bay Packers, you cannot feel comfortable. Yes, you just signed Aaron Rodgers. You finally got that deal done. Great. But you cannot, cannot feel comfortable if you are the Green Bay Packers because Deshaun Kaiser is going to be your backup. Again, 22 interceptions, a 53.5 completion percentage last year as a starter. 0-15 for the Browns. In his career... In his career, so far, he's been bad. A quarterback rating, a a, a, Q, a quarterback rating of twenty six point seven, twenty six point seven. But the Packers saw something where they can get rid of Brett Hundley, and I don't I don't know why. I do not know why. It, it boggles my mind. It really is strange to me. So, not as strange, however. 
in terms of trading quarterbacks is what the Jets did on Wednesday. The Jets uh, trading Teddy Bridgewater to the New Orleans Saints, which means that Sam Darnold will be the week one starter. I, I can't say I'm surprised by this simply because I'm a little surprised they traded him. I kind of figured Darnold would be the number one or would be the starter week one. Everybody's been raving about him in preseason. They love him. Um, Josh McCown has been a tremendous mentor. And if you ask anybody who knows anything in the NFL, Josh McCown is one of the most complete professionals, especially when it comes to the quarterback and position. Uh, didn't play at all last year. He'll be number two. Bridgewater, I, I kind of like, I love Teddy. I really do. They signed a one-year $6 million deal. They've got to pay him $1 million in bonus money. Um, and now the rest of the contract will be paid for by the Saints. So Bridgewater now goes down to New Orleans and will back up uh, Drew Brees, obviously. But he hasn't played in so long. And this is interesting, maybe not so much in terms of why the Jets, but why the Saints. And that's where I can kind of understand it. And that's why it makes sense to me a little bit from that side of things is – if he's healthy, if he's back to being Teddy Bridgewater that we saw before the injury and before the, the lost years in his career, New Orleans last year proved their ability as a running offense. You throw in a mobile quarterback to that in a dome setting, controlled environment where he's not going to be forced to throw a lot. He's not going to be forced to... Um, you know, playing that many elements, then okay. Then, then this kind of this, this kind of works. When you look at, at how Bridgewater's played in these preseason games, 74% completion percentage, 36, 316 yards, two touchdowns. Passer rating of over 104. When you look at him in his career, and again, let's go back to, let's go back to before uh, the injury for Teddy Bridgewater in 2014. 2014, 2015, he had 28 touchdowns to 21 interceptions, threw for over 6,000 yards, had a quarterback rating of about 87, 88, completion percentage in the mid-60s. Pretty good numbers in a domed environment where they had an okay running game. Now you send him into an offense that already has that, that already can do that. He can learn from Drew Brees a little bit. Saints might have set themselves up here for something pretty good. So uh, I, I, I can see it more from the Saints side than I can the Jets side because, again, the Jets, I believe it's only a third-round pick that they're getting back. Um, but who knows? We'll, we'll see exactly how it all works out for both of those squads. You kind of knew it was going to be Sam Darnold for the Jets. You knew that Teddy was going to eventually be the odd man out. But now they don't have anything. You know, they don't have anything there, and it's, it's very strange. They don't have a, a, a third backup, so who knows? Who knows what ends up happening? But uh, So big week in the NFL. Week one is coming up very, very soon. We will have a full preview show next week, which we look forward to. Can't wait. Excited about that. Um, and hopefully you guys are too. College football this weekend. Um, touch on that coming up in just a little bit. Did want to make note, though, um, Again, you're seeing that you're seeing more trades um, on the waiver deadline in Major League Baseball. Jose Bautista heading over to the Phillies, which this is what's weird. The Mets are doing a lot here with the Phillies, which kind of just sounds strange, but uh, they needed to do this. Justin Bauer uh, went on the disabled list after uh, they got him in a trade uh, on August 10th. They've had uh, Azdrubal Cabrera. Phillies are looking to make a run here, and I love it a lot. I love these two guys. Uh, I love Batista. I love Justin Bohr, uh, or Bauer, excuse me. They are going to be pretty solid. The question becomes, where do these other players, because again, the, the, the waiver deadline is coming up. And is Josh Harrison going to be on the move for the Pirates? Is Gio Gonzalez going to be on the move? What about Josh Donaldson? He could potentially be gone. There's been a lot of talk that Josh Donaldson will get traded um, after he's played, you know, since being placed on waivers. There's talk about that, but we will see what happens. Um, most likely, will have to take on the majority of Donaldson's salary just because. We'll see, though. Should be interesting. Should be fun. Um, I, it's, it's funny. Uh, I was talking to my father over the week, who's a Mets fan, 
And he, he doesn't, he's like, why do we have a trade deadline? Why do we get all this crazy about it if we can still do stuff on the waiver? Well, you really kind of do the waiver to see who's out there. And, and, and you really kind of just see a guy that you know, at this point, you're not going to be able to keep in the offseason. So that's, and, and that's the thing. But we'll see how it all plays out. We'll see how it all works. Uh, the big one to watch, of course, I think will be Josh Donaldson and maybe Gio Gonzalez as well, just to see if anybody tries to make a run uh, late here. You look at those teams like the Phillies, like the Athletics, the Mariners, uh, the Rockies, the Dodgers, those type of teams. So when we return, we'll touch on your guys' uh, listener questions as well as uh, get to the poll question that we had on our Facebook page earlier this week. And then uh, it'll be time to wrap up shop here. Don't go anywhere. You're on Press Row Broadcasting as part of the Public House Media Network. Listen to every episode and get the latest shows sent right to you. Subscribe to Press Row on iTunes, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Spreaker.com, and Stitcher.com. Or visit us online at www.thephmedia.com. Hi, this is Baxter Colburn, host of the Verse of the Day podcast here on Public House Media. Once you're done with this episode, I hope you'll come check out my show, Verse of the Day, where we take a look at real-world experiences and applications to one Bible verse every Monday through Friday as we get an idea of what it looks like to be a little bit better of a Christian and how we can make this world a better place one verse at a time. I hope you'll join me every single Monday through Friday right here on Public House Media. I hope you'll subscribe by going to Apple Podcasts or wherever you find good podcasts as well. Once again, thanks for tuning in to the following broadcast here on Public House Media. This is Press Row with Christian Heimel, a Public House Media podcast. Wrap things up here on this week's episode of Press Row, August 30th, 2018. Christian Heimel here with you. As always, on the Public House Media Network, we hope you guys will be back next week as well as we have our NFL preview show. An hour long, we'll touch into the headlines of the NFL, the rule changes, as well as maybe some predictions uh, for it as well. Uh, get to your listener questions. Get you, uh, as you can always submit them throughout the week on Twitter and Instagram at PressRowPHM. Email the show PressRowPHM at gmail.com. Or if you'd like, we can. you can always find us on Facebook, Press Row Podcast by Public House Media. You can find me on Twitter as well, at Chris Heimel. First one, Joseph in uh, Kentucky. The NBA and uh, USA Basketball have all come together uh, and announced support of the junior national team. What do you think this does to the future of the one and done? You know, Brian Windhorst actually had an interesting article about this on ESPN.com yesterday. Um, and, and basically, look, this is it's going away. It's going to be gone. Uh, we touched on this a couple of weeks ago with regards to some of the rule changes um, and how you know agents, USA Basketball will determine these quote unquote elite prospects, and, and agents could start negotiating with a high school kid, which I'm not a big fan of. Um, you know, the recruiting and all that stuff we, we, we touched on. But so this is what's kind of interesting: uh, the NBA, the NCAA, the Players Association have all aligned. Um, and basically, it, it's it's going to eventually lead to the demise of the one and done, uh, which is completely fine. It's necessary. I don't think the one and done has really served its purpose of what it was hoping to do. Um, you know, I, I get the idea of wanting to you know, give kids a taste of college experience and maybe they do stick around. But if you're going to do that, make them stay for three years like baseball does or like football does. So they might stay for that fourth year and, and complete their degree. Uh, but but what ended up happening, you know, so USA Basketball has been identifying top you know, talents at the high school and AAU levels for years and, and then brought them together to train for, for international competitions like FIBA and, and all of that stuff. Now, what's going to happen is this program will be extended to roughly 80 players, 20 per high school class. The NBA is going to give health and wellness training as well as assist in other developmental programs. Um, these camps are going to begin in October at the USA Basketball's headquarters in Colorado Springs. Um, what's interesting is this is the first time that all four have formally aligned and, and combined and pooled their efforts for the future of basketball. Um, and 
remember earlier this month, like we were talking about the rule changes, when the NCAA rolled out changes to the its eligibility that would uh, allow some players to sign with agents, an announcement that you know really kind of freaked out the NBA and USA Basketball and, and kind of caught them up. Everybody's on the same page here. So um, more doctors, better doctors and athletic trainers, experts in health and performance year-round of the players um, is going to be there for this USA Basketball. Um, and now what they're saying is people are, you know, looking to get rid of the, the one and done. So that's what this is going to end up leading to, is now everybody's on the same page, finally, and uh, the one and done, a rule that did not serve its intended purpose and has not helped college basketball, I don't think at all, uh, will finally be gone. So that's probably the best thing possible. Uh, here we go. Ray in Ohio, uh, what do you make of what Zach Smith put up on Twitter on uh, Wednesday afternoon? <sighs> Uh, I'm, I'm almost tired of talking about Zach Smith because he's, he's proving to be a, a bigger degenerate than, than we kind of thought and, and, and a, a worse person. So on Wednesday, uh, he broke his silence about um, after the university completed their investigation, um, saying in a number of posts that he believes people in the media, including ESPN, have hurt his children as well as Ohio State football players, staff, and fans. This was him on Twitter. Silence is over. I tried. I can't watch clowns in the media continue to run their mouths, not only without knowledge, but with complete disregard for my children. Their mother had plenty of disregard for them in this. Time for you all to face the damage you are causing. So this is a guy who has beaten his ex-wife multiple times, including while she was pregnant. And he's saying that, he's still claiming his innocence, by the way. Let's, so this is also him on, on Twitter. Let's talk. Facts, since so many people, mainly opposing fan bases, fans want to talk. One, my kids are suffering because of all of this, most important. Two, I never beat my wife. Three, Ohio State botched the investigation and worse off the quote punishment. Four, they forced Urban Meyer into his statement. I hope at least because he knows what's real and would have never apologized. Five, President Drake is either the cause of the joke of an investigation or punishment or he allowed it. Urban Meyer... His suspension is a joke, first off. Uh, so is Gene Smith, suspended without pay for two weeks. That's just embarrassing. So Zach Smith is, big, is digging a bigger hole for him here because he's continuously, continuously, despite evidence to the contrary, despite police reports, despite an investigation launched by Ohio State, denying that he beat his wife, that he was uh, physically abusive with her. And, and this is just stuff that, is only continuing to make it worse. And now he's actually, whether he believes, whether he understands this or not, and I don't think a lot of people do when they you know, have these reactions, but all this stuff is hurting his children because they were his actions. When he talks about my children suffering because of this, they're seeing dad's name on the news. They're hearing people say bad things about their father, but your father's the one doing it. If you're not doing it, they're not saying anything bad about you. So it, it, it's not the media's fault that your children are suffering. It's your fault that the children are suffering. It's, it, it's that simple. I don't know how much simpler we can put it there. doesn't help that uh, apparently um, there's video of uh, Zach Smith at a strip club on a recruiting trip. Um, and not only did Zach Smith go, but so did Texas head coach Tom Herman. So did a couple of other high school coaches. Um, he had a $600 involvement, uh, which was noted as part of the investigation last week, although he was the only person named the $600 was his own money. He did not seek reimbursement for it. But again, this is just something like it's out there. Yes. So this doesn't help the case. This doesn't help your children at all and their suffering. But at the same time, you did it. You're the reason why they're suffering. And I don't know how much simpler we can make that for people like Zach Smith to understand. All right. As always, you guys can Send in your listener questions, Twitter and Instagram, at PressRowPHM. Find us on Facebook, Press Row by Public House Media. Email the show, PressRowPHM at gmail.com. I want to get to this poll question because I brought it up. Uh, this is just interesting. I, I, looking at these baseball numbers and the discussion on the Cy Young, you know, Max Scherzer, Jacob DeGrom, Chris Sale. There's all these things that are just interesting. And, and then I started to actually look at the numbers, and there are more people we should be talking about. So we put this up on our Facebook page, uh, again, Press Row Podcast by Public House Media, and we asked you, who was the more likely more likely dark horse to win the Cy Young in their league, Aaron Nola or Blake Snell of the Tampa Bay Rays? 
and Aaron Nola, 75% pick Aaron Nola. So when you look at the numbers, you might change your mind a little bit. I know the, the Phillies are playing a lot better, but, uh, and possibly winning division. So Aaron Nola is 15 and three with a 210 ERA, um, 176 innings, 177 strikeouts, a opponent batting average under 200 and a, and a whip under one. He's got a better ERA than Scherzer. He's got less losses than Scherzer and Jacob deGrom. He's pitched less innings than both of them. Obviously has less strikeouts, yes, but has a better opponent batting average and better whip than Jacob deGrom. Aaron Nola is probably the one that we should be talking about of contending with Max Scherzer. Listen, Scherzer is going to win the, the Cy Young. Scherzer is right now... When you look at his strikeouts, when you look at his wins, when you look at his opponent batting average and whip, he's going to win. So, But Nola is a definite dark horse that we need to be discussing. When you talk about Blake Snell, this is where it gets kind of interesting because in the American League, there aren't a lot of guys to talk about. Yeah, Trevor Bauer, because he's you know 12 and 6 and the Indians are, are running away with that division. Uh, Chris Sale has been phenomenal. Problem is, similar to Clay Buckholes a few years ago when he had that great start, he's been hurt the second half of the season. Chris Sale should win the Cy Young. 12-4 and four right now. Uh, he may not pitch again until the postseason, but 219 strikeouts in 146 innings, which is absurd. Uh, an opponent batting average of 175 and a whip of .85, which is best in baseball, not just the American League. But when you look at Blake Snell, 16-5, and five, uh, one behind Luis Severino for the Major League lead, an ERA 205, hovering right around there. His strikeout numbers aren't gaudy, only 168, but he's not a strikeout guy. His opponent batting average is right there with Chris Sale, 179, and his whip is .99. Blake Snell might be the guy that you think is the bigger dark horse. That's just, I mean, when you look at the numbers, it seems as though Snell is the more likely of those guys. Whether that's true or not, whether that's what ends up happening, I'll really, I will be really interested to see the votes when this all comes out. That is going to be one of the things that I think is the most exciting part about all of this. It's how close are the votes going to be? Are they going to give it to Jacob DeGrom because he's just having a great season despite having terrible run support? Are they going to give it to Aaron Nola because he wins a division? Are they going to give it to Chris Sale despite not playing and not pitching for the last month of the season? Who knows? That's one of the fun parts about baseball. Really appreciate you guys being along for the ride. As always, don't forget to submit your listener questions. Twitter and Instagram handle at PressRowPHM. Email the show, Press Row Podcast by Public House Media. You can always find us on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, or, of course, thephmedia.com, where you can get yourself some awesome show gear. Next week, one-hour special NFL football preview show, predictions, analysis. We'll talk about the new rules as well. It's all coming up next week, and we cannot wait to see you on Press Row.